Alright. This guy is really, really good with a boat, by the All way. Right. We've arrived. Oh, I... Thank you for your business, eh? You're, you're, you're welcome. Thank you for steering that boat like a motherfucker. Alright, I need to be, um... This guy. Fuck, I missed it again. I missed it. It's like the third time I've gone that way. Alright, bro. Let's have a chat. Amun! We thought you lost at sea. But now I see the truth with mine own eyes. Yes, I'm alive. I have a family. Your ship was captured. I have Just three as babies. mine has been, yes? Mm hmm. I think the beggar is who he's expecting. We just haven't given him proof that we're the right beggar. It seemed like he was waiting for us to say something. Or maybe he was just expecting something in return for the coins. I've heard it gets pretty lonely out at sea. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like nasty weather. I've been instructed not to speak to anyone but my contact. Whatever. Well, okay, wait a minute, though. But you saying that has... How are you captured? <sighs> We're returning to Egypt with a full load of silk. When my gaze fell upon this godforsaken island. We sailed close for a better look. And by the time we saw the warships, all chance of escape was lost. <sighs> uh, all right. Thank well, they'll you probably be yeah. back to release you soon. I must return to my windmill. We'll talk later. Until then, I'm on. Whoa. <laughs> hey, got a secret to tell us? I'm all ears. Alright, need to be the beggar. Even though we look exactly like the last beggar, I'm sure he won't notice. Maybe we get get some more infinite coins from him. What now? I, I don't... God, shut up. Looks like nasty weather. Yes. It may even rain. <sighs> so you are my contact then? Yep. Were it not for these bonds, I would have been able to meet you as planned. But I have spoken to a member of my crew. He will be coming to free me later. Once I am released, I will seek you out. I you think and I'm your hair? To pierce through the dark storm clouds of deceit. It looks like we've stumbled upon an arranged meeting between the- I must go now. Oh, shit. God damn Very it. Very well, then. <laughs> You're like critical plot development, and I interrupted you again, man. I'm sorry. All right. Here, direct me. If we play along with this code word game, we may be able to glean some more information. Try visiting the beggar disguised as the captain. When he tells you that the weather is looking nasty, tell him the part about the rain. Yeah, well, I... Uh, uh, I need to stop clicking the goddamn light bulb. That's just making the game dumb. And I will talk to him again as himself, because, you know, why not? A few coins for a blind old beggar. Um... Uh, yes. Thank you, friend. Looks like nasty weather. It may snow. Yes, it may even rain. Who are you? You are not the captain. Whoever you are, you are jeopardizing the plan by talking to me out here in the open. If you have a question, I suggest you speak with Amun. God, you're an asshole. A few coins for a blind old beggar. Um, okay. Thank you, friend. Looks like nasty weather. Uh, are you gonna say the yes, same damn thing? Yes, it may even rain. Who are you? Yeah, okay. You are not the... Yeah, whatever. Okay, okay, okay. So, I don't understand. Oh, wait, 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 right, right. The point of coming over here... It was a really long trip. Uh, we, we went all the way from the windmill all the way over here to speak with, um... 
God, what is his name? Captain. Oh, okay, well, whatever. Um. Oh, shit, wait a minute. Oh, hey. Those large earthenware containers strewn about the docks are called pithoi. Bronze Age Mediterranean cultures used them to hold liquids like oil and wine. When full, they would be incredibly heavy, which is why I assume they have the loading crane. And when you need a crane to unload your booze, it's time to admit you have a problem. <laughs> Many huge terracotta pots like those pithoi were uncovered in the excavation of Nosos, the Minoan capital on Crete. Many of them ranged up to nine feet tall and six feet in diameter. It's amazing they could turn pots that large, let alone fire them. All those handles were to distribute the weight over multiple ropes when they moved them. Right, sorry. So as I was saying, um, maybe a few he could coins hear that I wasn't the captain. Because he said, he said that, oh, who are you? You're not the captain. Maybe I gotta be the captain? I mean, I don't really know. Thank you, friend. I mean, if Looks we're going that like far, if, if he was distinguishing my voice being different than what the captain's voice would be. Yes, it may even rain. Ah, good. Okay, never mind. I'm glad <laughs> to see that they finally let you off the ship. My name is Padros the Atlantean. Let me start by saying that I make no excuses for my people. They have no right to treat you this way. I wanted to meet with you to give you a chance to escape this prison island. There is an underground network of captives who are willing to risk their lives for a chance to return to their homelands. I have been meeting with them to organize an escape. With my knowledge of the island's inner workings, we have come up with a solid plan. We leave tomorrow, and we would like you to join us. You are going to get blown up by aliens. Prison island? Why do you call this a prison island? <laughs> Yours is not the first ship to be captured by the Atlantean fleet. The people of Atlantis go to such lengths to ensure that their private utopia remains unspoiled by invaders or trade. But what makes it a utopia for native Atlanteans makes it a prison for their second-class citizens. No one is allowed to leave. You will never see your homeland or your family again. Nor will you be granted temple rights. Whatever. I'm sorry, but like, like that sucks. But this place ain't that bad. I mean, I guess the homeland would be pretty cool. But I mean, if I was taken to some place that totally rocked, but I had to be a second-class citizen, as long as I could walk around and look at the cool little TVs. I mean, there's no TVs here. I don't really know. So what the huge problem is? What's your plan? I don't really need to go to temple. Your skills were impressed upon me by a fellow countryman of yours, Amun the Egyptian. He will give you the details Gypsy. of the plan, and you can find him at the windmill nearest to us. When he asks about the weather, tell him it is going to be a long winter. All right. So wait a minute. Who the fuck? Who was I disguised as when I was talking to him earlier? Because if he, if I'm supposed to know him, shouldn't he have like flipped the fuck out? I'm pretty sure I was the captain when I was speaking to him so earlier. Why should I trust you? It is true. You have no reason to trust me. All I can tell you is that this may be your one and only chance to escape. If you do not take advantage of it, you may very well regret that decision for the rest of your life. He sounds like a telemarketer. <laughs> this is your one and only chance to get our special six-month deal. Lock in now for $19.99 a month. I don't know. It sounds pretty risky. What if we're caught? Death will most certainly be the punishment for this crime. But even death is preferable to living as a prisoner. No, but this is not really a prison. I mean... I'll go now. Come on, man. Not even going to say goodbye. All right. All right, well, anyways... I was saying earlier, and I'm still sticking by it. When I was speaking to him as the beggar, I said the same thing. I said, um, it may even rain. And he went all batshit on me like, you know, who the fuck are you? You're not the captain. Go speak with the moon. All right, cool. I got it. Um, how would he have distinguished 
me being different from any other guys, you'd have to assume that, I mean, I don't know how the technology works in here, but whatever, it's science fiction, that the, that the suit would be able to speak in the voice of whatever's being said. I mean, it was kind of funny that earlier Arthur was um, kind of imitating the old man's voice when I think we were speaking to the captain on the boat. But seriously, it's like, if the beggar would have sat there, he would have heard the same exact words, so we would have to hear a voice that was different than the captain to know that it wasn't the captain. But don't you think that he would have been able to notice that it was his voice, seeing as how we were talking to him as himself? Like, I mean, I know he's blind and all, but... Uh, maybe I'm being a little uh, too anal about it. <laughs> where to now, huh? I don't know. The windmill. That will be ten drumoy. Mm, okay. <laughs> You're so happy, oh my god. You know, in Nubia, we lived on the Great Nile, and we had a saying. The river floods so that life may begin on you. Because sometimes life has a plan all its own, and there's nothing you can do. So, you might as well make the best of it. Besides, life is not so bad here. Most of the people are friendly. I have a roof over my head and food on the table. The resistance offered me a chance to leave, but I decided to stay. See? No. This is my home now. 